Hey everyone, this is Trevor Daly with MagMod. Hey, I am super excited because we got another How I Shot It episode. And not just today, but guys, you ought to, uh, you can't, or I should say, I can't wait to tell you we have so many shows scheduled through April and May. Uh, we're trying to do a better job scheduling these out in advance. So I'm excited to share those with you. But today, I get to introduce you to the person that has, I believe, the most liked image on the MagMod Instagram feed. And so, in fact, we're going to talk about that image first. So with that, let me introduce you to Mr. Wes Shin. Wes, thank you so much for joining me. Yeah, no, thank you for having me on here. It's, it's, it's such a big honor to, to be able to talk about some of my pictures for sure. Oh, no, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. And, and Wes, I, I will say this. Uh, one of my favorite things of doing these shows is actually hearing where people are watching from, whether it be right here in Arizona where I'm at, whether it be in Virginia where you're at, uh, Canada, India, Netherlands, like it's so fun just as people are tuning in. So guys, I want to encourage you as you're watching, uh, let Wes and I know in the comments uh, here on the, the MagMod Facebook page where you're watching from. I know Annie Kitt, in fact, here we go. Look at this. He's already saying, oh man, the Wes Shin. He's already, he's already <laughs> commenting about you. So uh, we certainly appreciate that. And I will try to toss up your comments, guys, as you're making them. So again, if you have any comments even about the photographs, that we're going to talk about, um, by all means, feel free to throw those up. We, we love the love and we love the likes and all that good stuff. So, so bring it. Um, with that, Wes, if you can just give me one second as we letting people log on before sure, we get sure, started. Yeah. Before we get started, I want to make sure, I mean, obviously we're live cause we got, uh, we got Paul and Annie Kett watching. Um, let me, let me just jump on the MagMod page and I want to share this over in the MagMod community as well. Um, uh, yeah, here we go. Share, uh, right. Post MagMod community. Awesome. And uh, why is it not letting me? That's weird, huh? Here, we'll just do this. I'll just copy and paste it. Um, <laughs> well, Wes, I would like to make sure everybody knows where to find you. Um, here we go. Copy. I'm not having any luck here, Wes. There we go. Cool. Now I shared it. Um, in fact, here, let's just throw up a few of these real quick. Paul's saying from Ohio. We got Susan. She's tuning nice. in from South Carolina. She says, hey, Wes. Uh, you hey, might know Susan, hey. right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We got uh, Williams watching from California. Appreciate you guys being here. Um, and, I, and I see some other people tuning in as well. But uh, yeah, so feel free, guys. Let us know where you're, where you're tuning in from. So, Wes, with that, tell everyone where you're based out of. Yeah, that's it, it's so nice to have everyone here. Uh, wow, all over the world. Pretty cool. Um, I am based out of Chesapeake, Virginia. Um, travel, uh, even though I'm based out of Chesapeake, Virginia, I get the, um, the really cool opportunity to travel over much of the state, uh, vineyards, um, some really rustic locations that are um, over 100 years old. And, um, and you'll see some of these locations and, and some of the pictures that were going to talk about here. So yeah, that's, that's a little bit about where I typically, uh, am able to travel and everything. That's cool. You know, I've been through Virginia one time and sadly my experience in Virginia was that's the one place I got a reckless driving ticket, <laughs> but before everyone judges me, I wasn't even driving <laughs> recklessly. I was on a highway that I think the speed limit was 70 and I was trying to pass a big fuel tanker. And so I got up to 81 on a highway. And apparently, you could probably vouch for this, Wes. Anything over eighty miles per hour in Virginia is reckless driving. Is that right? Yeah, there's some areas that you really have to like look out for, especially here yeah. in, in some of the remote cities, for sure. <laughs> yeah, well, they got me, and I was bummed, but that's all right. But I love Virginia. It was a beautiful place, so um, so I definitely <laughs> want to go back sometime. Um, right on. So, guys, on these, how I shot it. Sometimes we've done these episodes, and they've gone, you know long, an hour, hour and a half. Um, and I really would like to try to, and I mentioned this in the community one time, is feature more people and do kind of a little bit shorter episodes. So they're a little bit more uh, digestible, a little bit more where you can kind of turn it in, you know, watch it 20 minutes or so and, and be done. So in this uh, episode, we actually, I had Wes as hard as it was, because I know he has some incredible photos. I had him try to narrow it down to really just five images that we can chat about. Um, and so, and, and we're gonna try to do that going forward. Before we jump into those images though, guys, uh, I got to encourage you um, because it would be, I would, 
be remiss if I didn't. Definitely go check out uh, Wes's Instagram page because while we're only gonna speak about five images today, there are so many incredible photos on his Instagram page. I love um, I love the actual, the, the, the all the different combination. Is this you right here, Wes? Is that you? Uh, yes, that is me and my wife oh, and, and the two goodness. kiddos. What a cute family. Wow. <laughs> That is awesome. That is awesome. Yeah. And I, man, I wish we had fall colors like that here in Arizona. We don't get any of that. So, yeah. um, and then Wes, let's actually, uh, let me, let me click on this here. Let me go to, I was kind of jumping around your website, but let me just open it up from the beginning. Um, so mm -hmm. here's your website as well. So Wes Shin, uh, com. So definitely go check him out. Uh, if you live up in Virginia and you know somebody getting married by all means, I think Wes is an incredible choice for that. So right on Wes, you ready to do this? Yeah, sure. Let's get started. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, we got a real quick. I'll just throw a few more of these in here. We got uh, UK. I saw somebody from Romania was watching. We got Georgia is watching. Uh, Netherlands, Brian. I love Brian. He's been tuning in for a few episodes. So appreciate him being here. Wow. Um, so yeah, it's fun. Isn't it fun? Kind of like, wow, people That's are watching. Wild. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's, it is pretty cool. All right. So Wes, I think we need to start with the one image that, in fact, you know what? Actually, let me just show one more thing here. Let me go back to my screen. Let me go back to MagMod. This is your image on the MagMod page. And this is the image we're going to talk about first. But I just want to point out, and I wish, I don't know if there's a way I can highlight this, right down there at the bottom. Look at that. 13,117 people liked that photo. That's insanity, Wes. We have never had an image get that many likes, as far as I know. I think I think we had one recently that was like around ten thousand, maybe nine thousand, ten thousand. But dude, this photo blew it up. So, with that introduction, Wes, can you tell us about it? <laughs> How you shot this image? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, so this was at a the venue is called the the Cavalier Hotel, which is uh, one of the, in my opinion, the most beautiful venues in, in probably the whole state. Um, uh, built. It's a very old built building. I think it was built in the early 1900s, remodeled several times. Um, but um, this was taken with a 135 millimeter focal length. Um, the the lights, so there's two lights lighting this. And mm -hmm. um, I believe this is shot at f2. I'd have to look at the, uh, the metadata. But there's two lights lighting this. Um, so basically... Uh, Let me, I'll go ahead and bring up the BTS here. Um, and you can oh, kind yeah. of explain the background. There we go. Sure. So, yeah, so you're seeing uh, the light stand, which that is a, uh, I forget the exact model of that. It's a Monfrotto light stand where you can bend it out over like mm -hmm. that, which is really, really useful in this scenario. Um, all of the lights, by the way, that it, um, you're going to see throughout all of the pictures are, are taken with the AD, the, um, uh, I always butcher the name, the AD200. Yep. Um, however you pronounce it. Um, but uh, so there's a uh, straw gel on the, the one light that you see that's on the light stand right there. Mm -hmm. And um, I know it's kind of hard to see, but <laughs> to the right, right above the shoes where there's like a uh, the, like the, the soda drinks and everything. There's another light. And on that light, uh, there is a... Uh, you have the magsphere with the uh, CTB. I think that's a full CTB gel. Um, oh, let me mention that there's a both a sphere and a grid um, on on the light stand. So um, up above, you have the the straw gel with the uh, the grid and the sphere mm -hmm. really focused in and centered on the shoes. And that light that's off to the right is basically just uh, I wanted it to kind of just spray the uh blue light because yeah. when i took the initial shot i was realizing um that i was i was getting color like everywhere on the reflection and so yeah um i only took like six shots of this um to to get it really looking good and um and then it was on to the the next task but yeah um, so before before i show that image one more time here wes i want sure. to just point out so again guys if you if you haven't located the there's two flashes here, and the one flash is on the cabinets on the right-hand side, uh, just sitting on top of the cabinets. And you'll see a mag sphere. It's right next to some cans of what looks like Mountain Dew, maybe, or ginger ale. 
Um, and then you have that one flash overhead. So the one on the right, you have a blue gel and a mag sphere to kind of make it omnidirectional. So you got blue light going everywhere, right? And then on the left, you said it was a mag sphere and a mag grid. Is that right? Yes. Yep, that is okay. correct. With the straw gel on. Oh, with on. the straw gel. Oh, I like that. Yeah. So you put the you put the straw gel there to make things even a little bit more blue, so that when you right. you know yeah okay. In other words, more blue by by taking your white balance down even further. I imagine. Right. Um, okay. Very cool. And there's the image, you guys. I mean, you know what's funny, Wes, is is you kind of brought this in and you said, uh, you know, I got this very beautiful, you know, venue, one of the prettiest in town. But uh, the funny part is, is, is this is exactly what like your normal room kind of thing. Like you, I'm sure you had some incredible photographs at that venue and you probably did some, you know, really cool things. But like this is, this gives me hope that I can create this photo anywhere. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like the, <laughs> Yeah, um, you could, I mean, you can even, it's, it's possible to pull off reflections on, on this, like, similar like this to most wood. I mean, wood will work too. Uh -huh. um, really, I mean, there's kind of no limit, of, of, you know, where you can pull this off. The trick is, is um, getting the right angle, because I'm, I'm on the ground when I'm taking this. Like, I'm literally, yeah. like, face planting the ground, out. the camera's on the ground, um, trying to get as close to that like flat angle as I possibly could um, yeah. in order for the perspective to work and everything. So, yeah. yeah. Hey, um, Annie Kit was saying it's a, such an amazing shot and I totally agree. In fact, you guys make sure if, if you are um, watching, uh, make sure if you do see an image you like, give us some likes and love and all that kind of stuff. We, I know it's a, a small little thing, but it, it certainly also pays off when uh, Facebook is like, hey, do people actually like what they're seeing? So, um, so throw some love that way if you don't mind. Um, but, uh, definitely appreciate the comments as well. I, I do want to say, uh, Wes, there's one question that came in. Uh, VJ was asking, he, you had mentioned the light stand comes from Manfrotto. You don't remember the actual name of that light stand though, do you? Um, no, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I should have looked it up before we did this, but, nope. um, I think, I think it's like a light boom. Um, uh, and, and, um, if you look for it on Adorama or B&H, it'll, it'll surely come up for sure. It looks like uh, I'm finding Manfrotto boom stand. I, I think that might be it. Uh, here, let me, I'll, I'll just pull this up for everybody to see real quick. This is what I found right here. Yep, that, that is it, yeah. All right, so uh, so there you go, guys. If you have VJ, you had a question on that one there. Hopefully that uh, that helps you out there. Um, right on, uh, you got- I definitely uh, need a, I just wanna, caution yeah. I've, I've, you know through experience if you do put two of the 80 200s on there be sure to put a sandbag on that thing because that thing will will tip over and hurt someone <laughs> ah absolutely absolutely in other words there you always want to counterweight it so you have the up here on the top right hand corner of the stand you're gonna put your you know your flashes and then on the left uh, you can counterweight it and put a little usually there's like a little hook there and you can kind of add something to it um, sometimes, you know, Wes, when I'm on location and if I don't have, you know, sandbags that I want to carry around with me, sometimes I'll even just like, like hook my backpack or something mm -hmm. on it, you know, something heavy, um, even just somebody's bag, like a purse or something. Yeah. I can sometimes do the trick. So, um, very, very cool. And, uh, Brian had a question here. He says, did you have this image in your mind or did you shoot it and surprise yourself? Um, you know, I had like. I had, at that point, I had captured everything that, you know, all, all the requirement photos that I talk about because I dialogue tremendously with all of my couples before, well before yeah. the, the ceremony day and everything. And, you know, there's there's a shot list in mine and everything like that. Sure. Um, but um, in this scenario for this particular shot, um, no, I just kind of thought of it on the fly. So I noticed yeah. a reflection on the floor. And I, I was like, hey, you know, I've, I've done similar shots like this, so I think I could pull this off. Yeah. And it, it literally, like, I mean, you, you saw the, the BTS photo there. It, this took me, like, three minutes to do. Um, I just set up one light on the, um, the little entryway right there, and, and my light was already on the light stand for, for other photos. And I was like, well, I know this won't take long. So I just quickly set it up, and I was done in, like, three minutes so <laughs> yeah no that's awesome that's awesome hey there was one more uh, uh Hara, i think you mentioned this but he said uh or or he she i'm sorry 
or I'm not sure how to, I'm probably mispronouncing it as well, but what focal length lens did you use? And I think you mentioned it was a 135. Is that right? Yeah. So this, uh, on this particular shot, I was shooting on the Fuji X-T4 and with, with the 90 millimeter, which is in full oh, frame okay. world, it's, it's a 135. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, Very cool. And, uh, F2. So, and also I'm pretty sure I was, this was at one two thousandth of a second to get that really creamy, uh, bokeh. So yeah. Nice. Very cool. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Uh, let's jump over to these next image. Is that cool? Sure. Sure. Uh, Wes. Um, so it's funny cause we were just talking about a ring shot image and now you have another incredible ring shot <laughs> image and I'm trying to figure this out. This almost looks like a harp or a piano or something of that sort. So tell us about this. Yeah. So this was actually, um, one of my Indian weddings that I did and the, Indian weddings are just extremely colorful and vibrant and, and a lot of fun to shoot. Um, this particular shot was, I noticed there was this very old, I don't, um, this was taken almost two years ago, but um, this particular shot was uh, on a, there was this old piano, like wooden piano that um, wasn't, I mean, it wasn't in the best of shape. I think it worked. But mm -hmm. I saw these little, um, I don't know what these, I'm not a musician, so I don't know what these are called. <laughs> but, I think it's where um, they tune it, like where the strings are yeah. there to tune it and stuff. Yeah, yeah. someone could surely comment. But um, <laughs> <laughs> I, so I was like, you know what, this would be really cool if, if I, you know, prop the rings up there. And, and these were their favorite colors, too. I always ask uh, every couple, like, hey what colors do you like? What's your favorite color? You know? So yeah. I always try to incorporate their favorite colors, not mine. Um, and so, uh, it was basically, you know, magenta and blue. So, um, same light stand. And I just basically, there was, uh, one light off to the left and then another light that I kind of propped it on. It was on one of those, uh, but I put on one of the, it was an 8200 with a sphere. There was a sphere on both, um, no, I'm sorry. There's a sphere on the magenta, um, gelled light, which is lighting it from behind. That's the purple. Uh -huh. And then on the left is uh, 8200 with, uh, just the grid. So I could, uh, you can kind of see where it, like the lights kind of divided. I was trying to get it kind of in between the two colors. Um, and so I was trying to, I took a little bit, this scenario to kind of position them where the colors met. Yeah. And, and that was kind of the idea. And um, so it was really handy just to have, be able to control light with, with the mag, um, both the mag grid and the mag sphere um, yeah. in, in this scenario. Actually, you know what? If I remember right, I am, um, there's a third light with two mag grids that is uh, barely, I think I have it on like the lowest power. I just needed yeah. a little bit of light to light the rings. And, okay. And so just a little bit of shine there. Huh? Just a, a yeah. very, I think it was on like one twenty eight hundredth of the power, whatever, whatever I could get the lowest setting to. Yeah. So that's cool. That's really cool. And, and I love cause that, you know, that little extra shine on those rings from, from that light, I think actually makes it really pop, especially the top of that ring. And they're such unique rings, unique wedding rings to really show off that texture, uh, you know, and what, what's there. So that's awesome. Yeah. I love it. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and sorry, I, I know sometimes I'll have your face up there with the image and, and, uh, and, and it's funny cause Wes, you get to see exactly what everyone else sees. So actually when I'm talking there and, and the camera's not up, uh, uh, you just get to see yourself there with the image. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 it's fine. It's, it's, uh, it was a lot of fun to shoot that. That actually yeah. was also taken on, um, same lens, um, as the, the other shoe shot with the, uh, the 90 millimeter and on the X-T4, so. Is it a macro lens or is it just a normal type of lens? In other words, can you get like within a few inches from things? I, so, um, I do have a macro lens, but I find, um, like you can get some really cool shots for sure with the macro lens and some really wild using, you know, you can put stuff in front of the lens and, and different techniques. I like the, I prefer the 135 just because you uh -huh. can put more like props or, you know, you can fill the frame a little bit more like the lower th or 
um, the, you know, the rule of thirds. So I like being able to just kind of with people's eyes kind of lead people to the rings or kind of help yeah. tell the story versus having just one big, boom, you know, huge close up shot. That's, that's this kind of like what I like to do. Yeah. I love that. Uh, Lorenzo, unique wedding rings deserve unique shot. Crazy what you can accomplish with Magmon. <laughs> I agree. Oh with yeah. You. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. That, yeah. There's no way I would be able to do that without Magmon for sure. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Well, very cool, Wes. Well, let's, uh, let's jump into this third image here. Um, so this one, we did a couple ring shots and then we have, uh, this beautiful photograph here. Tell us about this one. Yeah, this is uh, Caitlin's wedding. And this is one of the, when I was talking about the state of Virginia, um, just the, the diversity and the various types of like venues and, um, you know, there's a lot of history in Virginia. And, and this particular uh, venue is in the Richmond area. And I believe this building is, um, I'd have to look it up, but it, it's somewhere around 150 years old. Um, wow. that door is not, it's been, you know, obviously the door has been like remodeled and stuff. I, it, this is a, uh, you can walk through, it's a museum nowadays, but all of that brick is as is like, it was built like 150 years ago. So it was really cool. You um, know, Wes, I was just, I was just thinking this reminds me of there are certain venues where people will, will pick that venue because of like key features, you know, whether it be a waterfall or some plant or whatever. But it's like, to me, this is one of the key features of the venue where the couple says, Ooh, we, we want that door in our shot. Um, you know, or, or in other words, they just really, they, they, it, it, something that stands out to them when they're trying to pick their venue. Yeah, this was such a, I believe it's i I'm really bad with names. So I believe this is pronounced Tredegar. I'm sure it, someone will comment somewhere in, in the comments to correct me, but um, that's Tredegar in, in uh, Richmond. And so the whole, you walk around this, this building, the structure, the whole structure itself was just uh, really, they, since they've renovated it, it's, it's, the setting just amazing and beautiful. And we just walked around there. The reception was actually behind the building and um, you, you could go anywhere and get some really cool shots like this. I felt like, so yeah. Yeah. That's cool. So tell us what, what did you do here in order to, uh, to light them? In other words, like what are they holding just a flash behind or are you using any kind of right. modifier? What are you doing there? Um, so yeah, to give another kind of quick, I love how magma, everything you can do, the more you practice with it, you can be really quick and efficient with it. Um, but just to kind of quickly explain a little bit behind this photo, we were pretty much done with like their sunset photo session. And we were just heading back to the reception. And Caitlin was like, I really like that door. And I was like, <laughs> you know what, me too. Let's go take a picture in front of it. Um, and so like literally just in a matter, of, I think, this was another shot that we did in like three or four minutes. And um, there is a, um, a really tiny, one of those little, they're kind of flimsy light stands um, mm -hmm. that uh, they're not holding the light there, but there is a light behind them. And so I, I basically just helped, you know, guide them together and, and I helped create a moment for them. I don't like, I'm not a big, you know, posing, I guess, fan. Yeah. Um, so I helped kind of guide them into this natural, sweet moment um, with each other. And there is a uh, CTO, um, I think it's a half CTO gel with uh, just the sphere on, on the AD200. And so that's why you're seeing the nice, uh, you know, glowing orb behind them. I don't know what yeah. else to call that. Um, that's and it, awesome. It, it just, yeah. So and that's pretty much um this is on a uh, 35 millimeter focal length um and it's uh, a little bit wider uh, then yeah very cool i i love uh derek here he says uh, i remember life before magmod and it wasn't very exciting <laughs> <laughs> magmod for life I, I like that hashtag derek we have to start using that actually you know derek's right. going to be doing one of these episodes on friday april 23rd i believe is when we have him scheduled uh so you guys will have to tune in and check his show out as well um Wes, I love that, man. So you shot it with a 35, you put a little, uh, a half CTO. Um, and did you use any other kind of like, did you use a, a, a mag sphere on this or was this just bare flash with a CTO? 
There was a sphere. Yeah. Oh, the sphere. Uh, okay. Yeah. So there was definitely a, uh, a mag sphere on this because I just, it helps get that. Um, obviously, you see like the focus there in yeah. the middle of the, the glow, but it, it helped yeah. get that nice center focal, yeah. uh, you know, center of attention in the image. So I love yeah. it. I, I call this my light bomb shot. So whenever I'm doing this kind of photograph, I, you know, I, I basically, I say, yep, my light bomb, you know, throw that light behind them and really, you know, have it light up everything. So, uh, good stuff, yeah. man. Really love it. Uh, for these particular shots, uh, I will say it's, it's oh. key. I always like to try to, um, cause you're shooting in the dark, you know? So yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I will say for this particular shot, um, I, I switch it into manual focus because if it's in autofocus, pretty much I think on, on any brand, it'll, you know, it'll hunt. And so what I usually do is um, I put that, I pump up the ISO before I take the image, just so I know uh, with focus peaking, I can make sure I'm mm. sharp and, and focus. And then I get it back down to the ISO that, that I want. And then I fire away. So, you know, nice. For people out there yeah yeah i like that tip that's a great tip wes i um one thing that i you know want to make sure that everyone knows as well is is when you're shooting and i i will have like assistants and they'll be like man how are you getting like good focus shots on you know dance floors or in the dark things like that and so two little tips that i like to throw out there one always make sure if you're uh, shooting and you want to actually get a focus assist light. So, you know, how some flashes will have a little focus assist, a little red beam or whatever. Um, it, it will only work if you're shooting on like one shot or single shot um, mode. If you're shooting on AI servo, oftentimes it's not going to send that out because it's constantly refocusing. Um, so that's one thing to keep in mind. And then the second thing is I like to actually turn and I'll try to find something that's about the same distance. That's some kind of light could even be like a light on the, on the door or whatever it is, or a candle. And I'll grab the focus on that. And then once I grab the focus, I'll switch to manual. Yeah, phone, exactly. And then I'll, I'll <laughs> flip it over from autofocus to manual um, yeah. and lock that focus in. But that's what, when I'm on a dance floor, I love, so I'll usually shoot like on like reception dance floor. I, and I'm talking about when the party's like rocking, right? Not like the first dance, but when the party's going and everyone's having a good time, I'll usually shoot at like 5.6 um, or even F8 sometimes if I can. Um, but usually around that 4.5, 5.6 range. And then what I do is I'll find the focus about eight feet away or so, six to eight feet, and I'll use a wider lens. So I have a lot more depth of field to work with. And I put my, as soon as I grab my focus at one time, I'll put it on manual and I'll shoot for hours on manual without ever refocusing anything. The only time I need to refocus if I like get off the dance floor and go over and shoot like a, a group shot or something. And now I'm 15 feet away or what, what have you. Um, but that way, what's cool about it, Wes, is then you're just like, and I don't know why I'm telling you this. I'm sure you already, you know, you could be teaching this right no. now. But, <laughs> but what's cool about it is then I'm like flying around the dance floor, shoot, 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 shoot. And I don't have to worry about the, bzz, 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 you know, the, where your lens is right. like focusing, refocusing. And so I'm just <laughs> flying around, shooting, shooting, shooting. And it's like, um, you know, it's, it's, it makes it fun um, more, you know, than, than annoying. And so, yeah, good stuff. Hey, Wes, before we jump into the next image, uh, Diego has a question. He says... Is the flash on the ground pointing upward or pointing at the wall? And also, was this strong flash power? So let me go back to that image. Maybe you can help answer those two questions there. I'll throw it up. One yeah, more time. so um, it's on a it is on a light stand, and the flash is is basically it's parallel to the ground, so it's pointing at the door. Um, okay. So it's you know here's here's the door, and and the flash is just aimed right at the door. It's not like I wouldn't say it's like right up. But it is probably within like, it's it's pretty close proximity to where they are. They're probably about eight feet from the door. Okay. Um, just to kind of give a perspective on yeah. on that that three D depth, and I I believe this was shot at uh, five point six as well. Cool. Um, just to get more detail. Yeah. So you got a little bit more everything. focus there. Love it. Yeah. Wes, let's jump into this next shot. This is a, uh, uh, looks like, in fact, this is, I just shot this the other day, something very similar. It looks like a, uh, the henna, like a Mendy type party, is it? Yeah. Uh, so this was a uh, um, Indian wedding as well. Mm -hmm. And this was actually, it was a three day ceremony thing. Yeah. And um, basically the idea here was, it was a not, I think it was kind of stormy out. So it's not like a really, it was a dimly lit room. So I needed some sort of light 
and the the henna the um it, it I wanted to kind of uh there's more shots of this too. So I wanted to kind of uh get the the story of getting the henna on because henna like this sort of henna doesn't really I mean it lasts for like two days and then it's like washes off, you know. Um, but it's really cool design. So I wanted to, you know, capture the story and the detail of, of the process of putting on the memories and everything, you know. So uh, there, everything, there's uh, three lights uh, going on here. So, and um, uh, there's a sphere on all three lights, max sphere on all three lights. So, um, so on the left, uh, on camera left, um, there is a, a path CTO. Uh, gel with okay. uh, just a mag sphere and that is lighting both um, uh, uh, the artist name that's putting on the henna and then um, uh, the bright here as well um, there is a another light to the camera right that's on the other side of the artwork being generated and created here um, that's just helping kind of give a little bit more depth to the image because when I took it with just two, like it was, it was a little too contrasty and like you couldn't really, like there was too much black. It was like a black hole going in. So, on so the you're right saying over there. one flash was in the background lighting up the, the sign yeah. there, the bakery thrift store sign. Okay, cool. Got it. Um, and yeah, actually that's the third light. And oh, I okay. just put, um, uh, just to kind of get something creative. So there's a sphere on, uh, you know, it's on a light stand, there's a mag sphere. And I kind of positioned it to where I just put like a water glass in front of the light just to get some sort nice. of break up. So, um, you know, something different on, on the wall there. So it just wasn't one one color to help kind of separate the image a little bit more. That's really cool, actually. So, so you use the water glass as kind of like a filter where the light went through it, kind of created a um, almost like a a little bit of a, a effect where it's not just this clean light lighting up the whole wall. Um, it almost makes it look like you have a. Uh, I'm trying to think. Almost like the light that comes through like uh, like trees and stuff. You know, the right. the modeled light kind of a. That's interesting. How cool! Yeah. What a cool yeah. cool idea, Wes. I love that. It's yeah um what's the uh i do have the modifier but i don't use it the one where you can put like the patterns and stuff on it came from that oh, idea the, yeah the mag mask um, yeah uh, the mag and beam, I, the mag I started mask. putting that on but then i was like you know i like i looked at there was a, just a water glass just sitting right there i'm yeah. like you know what i'm gonna try putting the water glass in front of the I light love that. And ended up being kind of cool so <laughs> that is really cool that's really cool Corey says excellent shot and i actually i want to share a comment here from uh nina um, Nina, here I'll bring you up here. Nina actually says, uh, he's a great photographer, one of my favorites. <laughs> he's professional and creative, a very nice guy. That's awesome. What a That's what an awesome. awesome compliment. Thank you, Nina. <laughs> Do you know Nina? Uh, yeah, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, that was very sweet of her to say. Um, right on. So, Wes, let's jump into this very last image here. And this is one of those that is a little bit tricky uh in that uh, oftentimes when you know i honestly i can't even say that i've shot very many it looks like a little bit like a longer exposure shot i'm gonna guess um but it, but there looks like there's a lot going on here because you added some color to the the barn or whatever that is you have this uh contrail or shooting star or something happened over here so um i'll let you tell everyone what how'd you do this one yeah so um this was another one of those that uh, absolutely was not planned. Um, we just went out into the field and I saw, I, I did see this structure out here. And yeah, I was like, you know what? Let's go get some creative shots with this. And, and so we went out here and um, so the white balance is reversed. Like I was talking about, I typically use a lot of like CTO gels just to get more, more blue. Uh -huh. Well, like we went out here and like, the sky was just really blue and I just wanted something different, you know, for the, yeah. for the couple. Um, and so I switched it. I think I put the white balance all the way to like, I want to say like hundred K or as high as it could go and I could get it yeah. in the camera so I could get this really warm, almost orangey, uh, color. And, and then I had, uh, two, uh, AD 200 lights, both, um, 
I kind of had a, um, the, uh, I didn't have the mag grip at the time as I took this. So I kind of had to like ghetto, like wrap it for it to work. Uh -huh. Um, and so, but there are two 8200s on here with both each with a, uh, CTB, uh, gel on them firing at full power, um, to get the, um, that two, uh, bluish teal color that ended up happening. And, um, as I was taking it, I, I think this was taken at about, um, one fifteenth or one twenty fifth second because it was on tripod as I took this. And, um, as I was taking it, this plane just happens to fly by. <laughs> that's and I was cool. like, oh, that's great. Perfect timing. So, um, yeah. So, was, yeah, oh, go, go ahead. ahead. Well, I was just going to ask, so what, what time was this shot? I mean, and, and I, and I don't mean like specific time, but I mean more like, like, you know, if sunset was at six thirty, was this shot after sunset before sunset? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this was after sunset. This was like almost, it was pretty dark. It was still, you could see like blue sky for sure, mm -hmm. but like sunset was done. Like it was, okay. it was just gone. And got it. So and you it were kind of in that. There that civil twilight where you got the really blue sky. It's not quite black yet. Um, quite, you know, completely dark, but you got a, a very dark kind of a Royal blue sky. And then you just turned it super gold by pushing your white balance. Is that, is that right? Right. Yep. And, That's uh, cool. yeah. And, um, pretty cool that, that magma kind of saved the day for me here that I was able to just, you know, spray at full power, the colors inside of that barn, um, to get yeah. that. Yeah. So, I love that, Wes. Awesome stuff, man. Um, what a, what a cool, cool shot. And I love that we were able to kind of end on that one too. I, I just want to throw up a few, uh, little quotes here. We got, uh, uh, Harshall said, great shot. Diego had mentioned, uh, feels like another planet. Great shot. Uh, Lorenzo over here, he's saying, uh, creative shots. Let's get the magma out. I agree, Lorenzo. Let's, let's pull it out. <laughs> let's go have some fun. Um, good stuff, man. Wes, dude, what a pleasure it's been chatting with you. And I, like I said, I, um, it's been fun getting you on here, uh, being that, uh, as far as I know, you still hold the title for that, uh, most <laughs> liked image on the Magmod page. So you guys, if you're watching and you're like, Oh man, I got to go after that title. Uh, feel free to hit us up. We can get you a link to send an image in to get featured on the Magmod Instagram. Um, we do, uh, we have a lot of submissions. We probably have, oh gosh, I don't even know how many. So we have to go through them all and pick, you know, which ones go up and, and, uh, and, and it doesn't happen right away. It typically is a, a few weeks or even months out, but, uh, but definitely let us know if you want to go after Wes's title, you want to wear the belt for yeah. most liked image. <laughs> um, oh, Wes, real quick, uh, Anika had a, a quick question about one of the shots here. I think he was referring to this shot. He sent asking, um, whoops, sorry. I didn't mean to make that go away. He says, sorry, I might've missed it, but did you have, did you have to light the couple too? I think you just had that light inside the barn that was kind of silhouetted, made them still, right? Yeah. yeah, so it's just that light, how you see the couple. I mean, yeah, they're kind of a silhouette, but it's just bouncing off the uh, whatever the ceiling is in there. Yeah. And then just coming back down, lighting them. So nice, nice, nice. Um, yeah. Before we end this episode, Wes, I'll just throw up a few more comments from some fans. We got an amazing shot. Hello from UK. We got Paul saying thanks for sharing these. Um, Derek, great shots. I'll give a follow for sure. And, uh, Ellie says, uh, laugh out loud, watch out. And Aniket <laughs> says it was amazing meeting you Wes and always a pleasure to see. I don't know who he's talking about. Um, <laughs> no, but uh, Aniket, it's a pleasure seeing you as well, my friend. Um, Wes, thank you so much for taking this time for, uh, spending this 40 minutes with me and, and chatting about these incredible images and, and just great dropping some fantastic knowledge that uh, other people can learn from really appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Get out there and practice. It's all about practicing and then executing on when it's time that counts. There you go. You got it. Wes, before we run, I'm going to throw up your Instagram one more time in case somebody hasn't followed you or, or catching the show a little bit late. Uh, w dot S H I N N go give Wes a follow, go check him out. His website's right over here. He's over in Virginia. Uh, so if you know somebody getting married in the Virginia area, uh, definitely have them give Wes a holler as well. Thank you again, Wes. Super appreciate it. You're awesome. Thank you. Honor and a privilege for sure. Yeah, no, absolutely. 
And thanks everyone for watching, for tuning in for these How I Shot It episodes. It really means a lot to us and we love all the comments. In fact, I'll throw a few up more as we leave here. Uh, mommy says, nice ma mommy, mammy, uh, nice meeting you. We got, Sully says, looks great and very difficult to even duplicate the shot. I agree, man, it's not the easiest. So um, Wes, you blew all our minds. We love you for it. Thanks again, everyone, for tuning in, guys. You guys are awesome. And uh, catch us next, actually, our next show, a uh, little How I Shot It's coming up on Monday. I'm going to be talking to Garen uh, Poyer. And then, uh, uh, yeah, and then, like I said, we have a lot of cool episodes in, in April and May. So, so stay tuned. In fact, if you don't, if you haven't already, make sure you hit the little thing on, on Facebook that says you want to know when these shows come up so that you get notified. So, Wes, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day, guys. Good weekend. Enjoy. Bye-bye.